Have you ever heard of the phrase scant quarter inch seam? Or have you wondered what in the world that even means? Well, I'm sure you have if you're a quilter, and I am not a fan of that term. I'm gonna tell you why. Might be a bit controversial, but my goal is to break free from the scant spell that has overtaken the quilting community. And not only that, I'm gonna show you my solution that'll take out all the guesswork. So keep watching, I'm gonna give you my side of the story. I cannot tell you how many times I get the question, what is a scant quarter inch seam? Or maybe somebody will say, I just can't get the hang of sewing a scant quarter inch seam. Or why do I even need a scant quarter inch seam? Well, I'll tell you, the term was created basically to compensate for the loss of some fabric in the seam when you are sewing pieces together. So for example, I have two squares. These are my test squares, and I do this every time I set up my machine. I have two two and a half inch squares that I'm gonna place right sides together because that's what we do, and then I sew a quarter inch seam. Now, I did that with these two pieces and pressed it open using my foot, my quarter inch foot on my sewing machine. I was very careful to make sure that I sewed accurately, but when I opened this up, pressed it and measured it, it only measured four and three eighths wide. It's not four and a half. And the whole issue is that seam right here. When I used my foot and I placed it exactly where it was supposed to go, yes, it's a quarter inch seam, but it doesn't allow for all the fold over that actually, as you can see, takes a little bit of that fabric and puts it on top of the seam. So we're losing that. Plus the thread adds a little bulk to it as well. So this is why that term scant quarter inch seam, sewing a scant quarter inch seam came about. It's not necessary. I would prefer an accurate measurement in the end, four and a half inches wide, rather than wrestling with what is a scant seam each and every time I sew. So can you use a quarter inch foot or can you use the marking on your sewing machine and still achieve an accurate quarter inch? Well, yeah, you can, but you have to make sure you do it exactly the same every single time. My thought is I'd rather just have an accurate measurement when I've opened up my block and I have measured the pieces. I want that to be accurate. I don't really care what this seam allowance is right here, whether it's a scant or a regular quarter inch. What I care about is that when I sew two, two and a half inch squares together, I get a four and a half inch width piece. That's what I want, an accurate finished measurement. The remedy for the scant quarter inch seam is using painter's tape to mark your sewing machine on the bed of your machine. So I'm gonna do a quick version of that process here just so that you can see how easy it is to do and what a great product you end up with in the end. So I'm gonna just walk you through what I do to prepare my machine. Right now it has a quarter inch foot on it and that's where I sewed this seam. I just put it right through. I actually did a little bit of a double check and made sure that my quarter inch marking on my throat plate matched up, which it did. So I sewed it together, I pressed it, and as you can see from the piece, when I use my ruler to measure it, it's not a lot off, but it's enough. You can see right along here, this should be two and a quarter inches right there. And it's actually not quite enough. And that's because of that bulk I talked about in the seam right there. So that when you look over here on this edge, we've got, and it looks like about a 16th of an inch that we're off, which as I said before, adds up and we don't want that to happen. So what I do is I take my painter's tape. This is one inch wide. And depending on how long your throat plate is and down the side of your machine, I like to go far enough down that my pins aren't gonna get caught in the tape as I'm feeding fabric through. So probably about, for my machine, probably about this long. And then I'm gonna stack it up. I'm gonna stack up six, maybe five or six layers of the tape so that I have a little bit of a lip on the edge. I want it to be even on the edges, and when you stack it up, sometimes they don't go exactly edge to edge. So I trim that off. I've trimmed this piece off to a half of an inch. I've trimmed each edge, and then I've trimmed the ends so that I've got a nice straight piece of tape here. 
So how do I position my tape on my sewing machine so that I get that accurate quarter inch guide? First thing, I'm going to take my foot off my machine. This is a quarter inch foot. I normally would not use that. I only use my universal foot. So that's what I would be removing from my machine. Then you need a ruler that has the quarter inch mark on it, pretty visible. So you can see that when you put it under your machine. This one is a dashed line. And then I'm going to drop my needle down just to the right of that quarter inch marking. So it's not on the line, it's not touching the line, it's right next to the line. This is my test. If it doesn't work, I'll adjust either way with my tape, but I'm going to try it and see if this is about right. I also have a marking lined up here to make sure with my throat plate to make sure that my ruler is straight so that when I put my tape on it stays straight. Be really careful that you don't bump your ruler because then it can get off. I'm going to place my tape snug next to my ruler. I'm not going to push it down really hard yet because I might have to reposition it. I'll pick it up and put my foot back on. And then I have two two and a half inch squares that I've cut to be my test squares. I'll place them right snug next to that piece of tape. And when I sew, I just keep my finger there so it doesn't do this or it doesn't go over top. It just really feels nice. About five or six layers is right about what you need of that tape. Then I'm going to sew. And cut. Okay, we've sewn the two pieces together. Now we are going to check to make sure that they are an accurate quarter inch seam. What do we want? We want four and a half inches. So I'm going to line everything up. First of all, I've got my edge lined up with the four and a half. I have my two and a quarter inch marking right here and I have my edge marked right there. So as we see, it is absolutely perfect. We have a perfect measurement from edge to edge of four and a half inches, which is exactly what we want. We didn't need to worry about any kind of a scant seam. All we have is an accurate seam. And there we have it. We have an accurate quarter inch seam from our painter's tape and our ruler, we have sewn an accurate quarter inch seam. That's all that it takes. I am always trying to be joyful, but I will always be merry. I hope you enjoyed this tip. If you are interested in seeing more of our videos, please like and please subscribe. I'd love to have you join me.